There is a new Wheel of Time book about to drop, and I read it. Today, I'll give you my non-spoiler review. Michael Livingston's Origins of the Wheel of Time releases on November 8th. Here in a few days, I got my hands on a copy a bit early, and I want to give you my thoughts about the book, its contents, and really what I think you're going to think of it. I will first start by saying that this will be, for the most part, a completely non-spoiler review. I am not going to give away information that's relayed in the book outside of what you might expect to find in it, most of which is public already anyway. So, for example, the marketing materials for the book have said that they will release the identity of Nekomi, and they definitely do, but I will not be talking about that in this video. You'll need to pick up a copy of the book yourself to find out that answer. So I guess I want to start with what I think that you should expect from the book. This is not another entry into the Wheel of Time story. There are certainly things that you're going to learn that explain parts of the story, but that's not really the purpose of Origins of the Wheel of Time. The book explains who James Rigney Jr. was, how he got into writing, what inspired him, and ultimately what inspired the story and the characters of the Wheel of Time. Now, I've been a Wheel of Time fan for more than 23 years, and I've read the series literally like countless times on an endless cycle of rereads, as well as I've read all of Robert Jordan's blogs and every scrap that I could find from his interviews. And I still learned quite a bit from the writing in this book. The book opens with a very moving chapter about Robert Jordan and the magic of his writing. Livingston gives a very heartfelt and powerful story of his experience as a fan of the Wheel of Time, and the book was definitely written by a true and devoted fan. That will come through very clearly. And Michael Livingston, like many others, was inspired by Robert Jordan's book series to become a writer himself. There's also a section in the book that is devoted to essentially the story of writing the story. And it's not only very well written and researched, the actual story behind the story itself had my eyes welling up just a little bit. Uh, I had vivid memories of many of the things that were being referenced there, but with now added context from the book, and it brought out emotions that I was not expecting. It's crazy how when we're invested in something that we love, like the Wheel of Time, how it can cause such strong emotions so many years later. There were definitely some subjects that came up in Origins of the Wheel of Time that I was not expecting to be addressed, as they're typically glossed over when any type of critical messaging about the Wheel of Time is being given. Specifically, there was discussion of the gender binary situation in the Wheel of Time and feminism and even trans rights. Those things were brought up in Origins of the Wheel of Time. And again, this is non-spoiler, so I'm not going to get into what was said so much, but I would say to me it was good to see that topic addressed from such an official source. I will also say learning some of Robert Jordan's intentions with characters and with themes in his story has me very interested to look at the books from a different angle on my current reread. I think we all know that The Wheel of Time isn't perfect, and I'm not sure anybody really thinks that, but just like my favorite character, Nynaeve, I love it because of its imperfections. And now knowing some of the motivations behind the creative choices, I think is gonna help me read the novels differently. What I don't think is controversial to say, though, is that Robert Jordan wrote a surprisingly progressive story for the time that it was written. I will venture to say that Many so-called purists or originalists will not like some of the things written in The Origin of the Wheel of Time when it comes to the intentions behind the writing. Speaking of Nynaeve, she had a very different original backstory that I will not spoil, but let's just say I am glad that she ended up with the story that she had. You could say the same about many of the characters from the books. And one of the really cool things that Origins of the Wheel of Time explores is the notes and Robert Jordan's initial visions of the books and how they evolved over time including while he was writing the books. The second half of Origins of the Wheel of Time is, is basically like a series of glossary entries, very similar to the Wheel of Time companion that was released years ago. However, rather than addressing the in-world lore of the books like the companion did, this addresses the origins of many of the characters, their names, the names of places in the story, the evolution of their storylines, and some insight into how each character was created. This is something that I'm going to need to go back to a, a few more times to actually totally absorb. But now that I've read it once, there was quite a few of these that were really cool to me and they stood out. Of course, the one that I think is going to be the most interest to fans right off the bat is the origin of Nakomi as a character and who exactly Nakomi was supposed to be. I will tell you that this is answered in Origins of the Wheel of Time, and it's interesting to see how some people have actually been right uh, in their theories over this. I won't, again, say what the answer was, but one of the theories got it right. 
I made a video years ago about some of the theories, and one of those theories that I talked about was correct. Now, not my theory, mind you. I definitely did not predict the answer here. I think many people are going to enjoy some of the explanations of some of the Easter eggs from our time that are in the Wheel of Time books. You're going to see those in that glossary section explained, and it's something that I thought was really interesting. I've made videos on that in the past, and it was really cool to see some of them addressed. Also included in the book are some things that I think are super cool. There is a completely updated world map for the Wheel of Time included in the book. Now, this has been previously mentioned and released in the promotional materials for Origins of the Wheel of Time, but I still find some of the changes to be interesting. For one, the size of the continent of Shanchan is significantly larger than we had previously thought, and its placement on the world map also explains one of the larger plot holes from the books in regards to the way the Shanchan sailed. Something that I learned, though, in the Origins of the Wheel of Time is that the last battle was specifically mapped and plays out almost exactly like a famous historical battle. It was incredibly cool to see how this played out, and I'm not going to lie, that is certainly going to help when we get around to making a Last Battle recap video. Overall, what do I think of the book? Well, I think it was really good for somebody like me who is interested in the backstory, the lore, and what Robert Jordan was planning with the books. But if you're somebody who's expecting something similar to, let's say, The, the Companion, Origins of the Wheel of Time might not be what you thought it was. There are points in the book that definitely take a more academic approach, something that the author Michael Livingston does not apologize for. He is, in fact, an academic. He's a professor at the Citadel. So do I recommend the book? Well, I think at this point you can probably tell that I do. It was a book that I could not put down. I'm a fast reader typically, but like I was in full memory of light reading mode here where I did not stop reading until I had completely finished it. You can pick up your own copy of Origins of the Wheel of Time at any bookstore, or you can grab the audiobook on a platform like Audible. The audiobooks are read by Kate Redding and Michael Kramer, who you may know are the audiobook readers for the Wheel of Time series. If you don't have Audible and you want to pick up a free copy, you can use my sponsorship link at audibletrial.com forward slash Nablus and grab the Origins of the Wheel of Time for free. Even if you choose not to keep the service, you will still get to keep the book. Again, it's audibletrial.com forward slash Nablus. So are you going to read Origins of the Wheel of Time? Let me know in the comments of the video. Make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you want more Wheel of Time and fantasy related content. That's what I make here. And if you want to support the channel, check out my Patreon. Huge thank you to my patrons who are the main reason this channel exists. You can see their names on the screen right now. And lastly, check out one of these videos here that you might like as well. Thanks for watching and until next time, peace out.